Today, we're going to look at a new Sonoff wall switch. No, this isn't the no neutral switch. That'll come later. This is the updated version of the old T1 capacitive touch switch, and it's called the TX because X's are cool, not as cool as Z's. Let's check it out. Well, the first thing that'll be obvious to you is that they've updated the packaging. This is what the old T1 package looked like. I don't usually care much about the packaging. To me, the simpler the better. But I can understand that some people associate quality with the package that it comes in. Inside this fancy new box, we get sort of Apple-ish looking package with instructions, but no sticker. Why doesn't everybody include stickers? We all want stickers. Stickers. I liked the old Sonoff T1s, and I still have some to use as a side-by-side -side comparison. So let's do that. The new TX doesn't have the stickers or the painted on shapes to indicate where the switches are, but they're there. If you look at the back side, they're going to be square and the lights from these will shine through that and give it a little bit of a square shape. There are three different versions of the faceplate, and this one is for the US and it has a bevel around the edge. So it has this nice little bevel around the edge. It doesn't have the sharp edge that the old T1 had. So that's nice. Overall, I certainly prefer the look of the new one. Under the hood, they look fairly similar. You can see what they've done with the mounting is very different on the TX compared to the T1. We'll talk about that more in a minute. This is the RF antenna. It's just a different shape. I don't imagine it's too terribly different in functionality. There was a button here on the face of the T1, and they've moved that over here to the side on the TX. See that? The button that was here on the T1 on the face wasn't accessible when you had the cover on. On the TX, they've moved that button to the side, and they give you a little gap so that you can access it when the cover is still on. So that's cool. The components look pretty much the same. They both use the same Wi-Fi chip, the 8285, which is really the 8266, just has the memory built in instead of having it external as a separate little module. The pins for flashing are available right here. That's awesome. We will have to find GPIO zero. I'm not sure where that is just yet. The back sides looks almost identical. Not much difference there. And there's even less difference in the power module portion underneath it. They have the same 10 amp relays, the connectors are the same. These are good connectors. I like these connectors. They both have a buzzer, which I just learned how to use in Tasmoda. That's cool. And then they have the power module. They seem to be mostly the same. So as I was saying, the one thing that is very different is the mounting of the two of these. The old T1 had this kind of pre-bracket that you would mount to the switch box. And then this module kind of clipped in there and then this kind of snapped on top and it was not the greatest. You could pretty much just pull real hard and yank it out. This I like much more that you can screw it directly to the junction box. Should make for a much more secure installation and you can do it with this upper circuit board in place since they give you cutouts for those screw holes. And then on the back side they've actually done a really nice thing here. They gave you this sort of safety cover for the mains terminals. Anything that can keep my fingers further away from 120 volts is a welcome improvement. Another important improvement in this updated version is that the RF frequency that they use is 433 megahertz. The old ones were 315. I have to admit I never tried using these with the RF bridge. I would have assumed that they would have worked, so I was surprised to see that this is 315 megahertz. I thought the bridge was only 433. Either way, this new switch should definitely work with the RF bridge. So that's it on the outside and the inside. Let's get this baby flashed with Tasmoda. I'm sure the question is going to come up, does this switch work with DIY mode? No, it does not. Moving on. These pins here are the serial pins that we need for flashing. I looked all over and could not find GPIO0 labeled anywhere. But I went through with my voltmeter and I figured out that this side of this resistor which is R19, I believe, seems to be GPIO zero. The only way I'm really gonna know for sure is by using it to flash. It'll either work or it'll explode. So here we go. So I've got my FTDI adapter. I'm just gonna slide these pins through the holes. Then they've given us a ground up here. And with this little jumper, I'm gonna hold 
right there. Now with all that done, and plug in my adapter. Okay, it powered on. I'm gonna remove this maybe GPIO zero pin. <laughs> and then I'm gonna open up Flash Easy, which is really Flash ESP8266.exe that you can find in the ESP Easy Mega zip file. It says I've got COM4. I'm gonna select the latest Sonoff dot bin and then I hit flash and we will know if I really held down GPIO zero or something else. And it's working. Ha <laughs> ha that's it. We did it. We found it. So that little guy, uh the resistor there labeled R19, that is GPIO zero. Yay! Alright. Flash complete. Well, you can see a little blue light blink in there. There's a there's the Sonoff access point. And then in our browser we can go to 192.168.4.1, and there it is. <laughs> okay, working perfectly. I can put my password in here now and save it. Should be able to open Termite and connect to this board. Power it off, power it back on again, and there it goes. All right, so there's my IP address. So either I could put in a backlog command or I could just go to that IP address. According to the Tasmoda guide, for the TX switch, it looks like the module we need is still the T1, and mine's a three channel, so that's what I'll pick. And that should give us what we need to make this switch work. So let's find the T1 three channel, save that. Now I'm gonna go into configuration, configure MQTT, and put in the IP address of my Home Assistant Pi or MQTT broker, the user and password for my MQTT broker. Change the topic to the name of this switch, whatever you decide to name it, and then save. Uh, let's go in and change the configure other, so we can change the name of this. I don't know yet where I'm gonna use this. Okay, and I think that's most of the information. I could put a sensor on GPIO 1 or GPIO 3, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So that's it. I'm gonna put it back together and power it up with regular mains power and see how it works. I've got it connected to my extension cord. I'm gonna power it up. Turn down the exposure on the camera a little so you could see those LEDs. They are very faint and I think that's nice. They seem to be flickering on the camera image but I think that's a low light artifact. They don't flicker in real life, at least not that my eye can detect. So let's try them. Top one is switch one, middle switch two, bottom switch three. Okay, everything seems to be working. This is actually kind of cute the way they have this little Wi-Fi light there blinking off the end of the S in S on off. Because the new Sonoff TX communicates also through 433 megahertz, if you have the Sonoff RF bridge with Tasmoda, you can program the TX to respond to signals from the RF bridge. To make that happen, you press and hold one of the buttons on the TX until it beeps once. Then you press a button on the RF bridge. When you hear that second beep, it's programmed, and you can now control the relay with this button on the RF bridge. And it works the same for all three buttons. Pretty cool, eh? I guess the last step is gonna be Home Assistant. And let's do something I don't always do. Let's do Auto Discovery. Set option 19. The default is off, but we're gonna turn it on. And then we're gonna go to Home Assistant. And I didn't have to restart or anything. It just shows up. And if I click this, I can toggle it right here. Excellent. Well, all right, that was easy. And when you're ready to add these switches to your user interface, just select which page you want them on, click your plus. You can just grab an entities card and start selecting TX1, TX2, TX3. There they are. This is my monster card that shows me all the lights that are on in the house. And the last thing we'll do is add our new switch to Tasmo Admin. If 
If you've never used it before, Tasmo Admin is an add-on for HASS.io that will discover all Tasmatized devices on your network. This is also a good way to find the IP address. If you go to auto scan, it checks your network for any devices running Tasmoda. I don't know how it knows. Must be magic. And after a couple minutes, it'll pop up with a screen that says it found a new device. It'll give you the IP address and it will give you the chance to change the name. You can test it from here. You can see the lights go on and off. Save that. Now back in your list, you'll find TX1, 2, and 3. Tasmo Admin is additionally awesome because it gives you a lot of information. If you have sensors connected, it'll tell you that, and it will also give you the Wi-Fi strength and the last time it was rebooted. Very handy. Well, that's it. The Sonoff TX, the next generation of Sonoff touch wall switches. I like it. They've made some nice improvements. I've always kind of liked these Sonoff touch switches. We have a lot of places in our house where there are three switches in the wall. These Sonoff touch switches have been a great way to replace that in a much smaller form factor. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.